Hello, happy Lord's Day to all and a happy Father's Day to all daddies out there. You know, like previous month's Mother's Day, this year's celebration may be one of the saddest or we may say different, especially to some people due to pandemic or due to losing of their um, beloved father. Life is fragile, but the good thing, all fragile are temporary. We have an eternal Father, whom we can always count on and lean on. Our Heavenly Father is the strongest fortress we have. Let us come to the great white throne and meet Him in His holy temple.
let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Psalm 98 Make a joyful noise to the Lord. O sing to the Lord a new song, for He has done marvelous things. His right hand and His holy arm have worked salvation for Him. The Lord has made known His salvation. He has revealed His righteousness in the sight of the nations. He has remembered His steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody. With trumpets and the sounds of the horn, make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who dwell in it. Let the rivers clap their hands, let the hills sing for joy together before the Lord, for He comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. Let us prepare our hearts to worship our Lord. Held the oceans in his hands, who has numbered every grain of sand? Kings and nations tremble at his voice, all creation rises to.
God eternal, humble to the grave. Jesus, Savior, risen now to reign. Our God, seated on this throne, come let us adore Him. Behold our King, nothing can compare. Come let us adore. Behold our God, seated on this throne, come let us adore.
tomorrow I just live from day to day I don't mind from this sunshine For its skies may turn to gray I don't worry all the future Merciful and gracious God, we come before you as people who desperately need to see you with clear vision. We need to behold your majesty in order to feel our smallness. We need to gaze upon your holiness in order to feel our sinfulness. We need to see your humbling self-offering at the cross in order to know how truly loved we are. O oh Jesus, you showed mercy and grace in the face of undeserved evil. You were mocked and beaten for us. 
When sinful men reviled you, you were silent like a sheep before its slaughterer. When people cursed you, instead of bringing deserved judgment upon them, you spoke words of forgiveness and blessing in return. Lord Jesus, thank you for living the life of unmatched goodness toward God and your neighbor that we should have lived and for taking our place under the curse that our sin merits. O Holy Spirit, help us to live lives that abide in Christ and are thus truly a blessing to those around us. Help us to love those who are unkind and unfair to us, to speak kind words to those who mock us, and to be gentle with those who are harsh. Thank you that your declaration of blessing upon us is sure and immovable, rooted and grounded in your unchanging and eternal character. And so this morning, Father, as we come together as a family, even though we are at home, we would like to worship you in spirit and truth. Please receive our worship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Our scripture reading for today is taken from the book of Psalm 103, verses 13 to 18. Psalm 103, verses 13 to 18. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. For he knows our frame, he remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass, he flourishes like a flower of the field, for the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and its place knows it no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him, and his righteousness to children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Happy Father's Day. It is so good to be here with you again. I wonder what are you planning to do in celebration of the Father in your family? With Metro Manila still under GCQ, creativity is needed in order to express your love for your Father. You know, I remember when I was young, we would celebrate Father's Day on August 8th because Papa Tie. So, you know, what a privilege for fathers, especially Filipino-Chinese fathers. We get to celebrate Father's Day twice. Once on this third Sunday of June, and the second will be two months from now. Papa Tie, August 8th. You know, among the Jews, Father's Day is a day where fathers affirm their responsibility in child rearing. In the Jewish Talmud, there is a section that speaks entirely about being a father. It says, a father is obligated to do the following for his son. First, to circumcise him, to redeem him if he is the firstborn, to teach him the Torah or the law of Moses, to find him a wife, and to teach him a trade. Others say, you have to also teach your son how to swim well. Well, in this Talmud, the passage is teaching a love of learning, how to create meaningful relationships, how to be productive and contributing in the world, and the practical skills that one needs every day to survive. I think of that as resilience teaching him how to stay afloat when things get tough. That is our responsibility, not just for the Jewish father, but for each and every father. You know, every culture has an expectation of fathers. And on Father's Day, we can recognize the beauty, the memories, and sometimes the shortcomings 
of the fathers that came before us. Hopefully, we can improve upon the strides they made. In general, you know, fathers have a sense of what it means to be a father because they had fathers, they have fathers that they learn from. Nonetheless, this idea, this sense of what it means to love, to care, and to provide, it is a reflection of our Heavenly Father who has manifested His great love to His children. Through the centuries, it has been His story from one from the other. Through the men He has chosen, they wrote about the fatherhood of God to His people. Through the scripture, He affectionately calls out to His people, yearning for us to draw near to Him. So this morning, in celebration of Father's Day, let's look to God who can truly show us what a good father is. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that each year we have this third Sunday of June to celebrate Father's Day. Nonetheless, O oh Father, that we'd like to focus on you, our Heavenly Father, who is the only model of what it means to be a father. O oh Lord, open our hearts right now as we receive your word, as we gain insights and instruction, as we learn a knowledge of you, a knowledge of a dear, loving, heavenly Father. May we bask in your love, in your faithfulness, and in your word right now. Bless us, O Father. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. So our message for this morning is the fatherhood of God. And our passage is in Psalm 103, verses 13 to 17. 103, Psalm 103, verses 13 to 17. Uh, let me read it in the English Standard Version. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. For he knows our frame, he remembers that we are dust. As for men, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower of the field. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone. And its place knows it no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord's is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him. And his righteousness to children's children. Psalm 103, verses 13 to 17. Now we're talking about Jewish fathers. And in fact, this idea of God as Father is not new in the Old Testament. It, through Moses, God said in Exodus chapter 4, verse 22, Israel is my firstborn son. Hence, for God to declare Israel as being his firstborn, Naturally, he claimed his right as father to this child. Later, in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 6 to 7, Moses declared to Israel, Is not he your brother? Uh, sorry, is not he your father who created you, who made you and established you? Remember the days of old, consider the years of many generations. Ask your father, and he will show you, your elders, and they will tell you. Here, God is not only the creator who created you and me, but at the same time, he is our father. Old Testament Israel was even told that this has been a fact for many generations, and that by asking the older ones, their fathers, and their elders, they will tell them stories that points to Him. God is Father to His people. This concept of God as Father in Israel was never individual, but as a group, as a nation, 
only as a people is he their father that as he is the God of Abraham the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob collectively he is the God of the nation Israel the idea then is that each Israelite is to realize and confess that God is his or her God then and only then is he one with the people of Israel in acknowledging that God is their father it is only that step that he is their father furthermore being the father of Israel he is seen as their spiritual head their great shepherd and their faithful provider qualities that our heavenly father imbibes in each earthly father to be that every father has to be the spiritual head of his family a shepherd or a pastor who ministers to his wife and to his children and he has to be a faithful provider not just providing money or food he has to provide stability he has to provide discipline he has to provide security these qualities may seem difficult to fathers to accomplish but then that is the point our Heavenly Father desires fathers to learn from him and only by learning from him only by following the Heavenly Father can they be good fathers that is the essence of it to Old Testament Israel God is also known as the God of your fathers and you just go through the entire Old Testament there are so many passages that speaks of that in essence every father is to learn from the Heavenly Father and they are to be accountable to him to see God as the sole model of what it is to be a father look up to your Heavenly Father who can lead you and provide for you do not pass these roles to your wife or your Sunday school teachers or pastors they may help you or they may compliment you but remember you are the one God plays there in that family so God calls each father to be their spiritual head to be their pastor to be their provider so to all the fathers may God lead you and help you now coming to our passage this morning Psalm 103 is a psalm also about God being a father when you look at the entire psalm it is an exhortation to God's people to count his blessings it is a recalling of what the Lord has done for them throughout Israel's history it says at the beginning bless the Lord O my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name bless the Lord O my soul and forget not all his benefits for who forgives all your iniquity who heals all your diseases who redeems your life from the pit who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles now that's a very beautiful start of Psalm 103 and so from there you we can see we can count the many benefits the many blessings he has given us as his children you know for Christians Psalm 103 also speaks of the Messiah we are to count our blessings as well from verse 2 and 3 it speaks of Jesus as the one who heals our souls and forgives all our iniquities he has truly redeemed our life from the pits of hell he crowns us with his steadfast love 
and mercy. It satisfies the longing of our soul. And from this day onwards, it is not by might nor by power, but by His Spirit. From verse 6 then, when we read on, it says, The Lord works righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known His ways to Moses, His acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in love. See, the list of benefits continued and yet it shifted to a survey of how God has dealt with His people in spite of their many disobedience. God's character and divine attributes are not shaped or influenced by the sin or iniquities of Israel. Same way, our transgressions do not influence how God is going to bless us or how God is going to deal with us. In verse 10, it says, He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. And in verse 12, As far as the east is from the west, so far does He remove our transgressions from us. Do you notice that in the Bible, we see many heroes of faith? And yet, when it comes to the model father, there's hardly any model father throughout the Bible. We may cite some of these men and with their qualities, and yet, when you look at their being a father, somehow they fall short. Why is that? This is because God wants us to look to Him and learn from Him. Fathers, God wants us to really learn from Him and point to our children. We have to point to our children. They have a heavenly father. And He is the sole model of what it means to be a father. Therefore, like Isaiah, we are to acknowledge, but now, O Lord, you are our father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. From this, I'm reminded of a New Testament verse that Paul wrote down in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And from this, I'm reflecting back to Old Testament Proverbs where it says, train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. So just looking at these three verses, somehow they relate to each other and they give us an idea as to how God is as a father. Our Heavenly Father knows those who are His. He watches over each one of them. And He builds them up. He refines them. He sanctifies them. And He reproves as well those He loves. As a father, the son whom He delights. He disciplines them and trains them in his way so that as they grow in their walk with him they will not depart from the Lord they will always be steadfast in him so always remember that he is our father and that he is the one who refines us who prepares us who reproves us and disciplines us so that we become holy and blameless before Him. Now, on the other hand, God bless us. When God bless us, He really bless us unconditionally. It is not dependent on what we can offer Him or give Him. It doesn't mean uh, that you have to read the Bible before He blesses you. Or you have to pray a certain prayer before He blesses you. No. 
His favor is upon us in Christ Jesus. And this are given to us unconditionally. In Him alone, we can find mercy and grace. In Jesus, we see Him then as a Father who shows compassion to His children. So, from all these things about God as our Heavenly Father, it is reassuring to know that we can count on Him. In verse 14, For He knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. He knows not only our biological make, He also knows us personally, emotionally. Our deepest secrets and woes are before Him. Our sinfulness and blemishes are also before Him. And though God knows us so well, the Lord shows compassion to those who fear Him. He does not deal with us according to our sinfulness. God knows our frame. He is faithful. His righteousness and steadfast love continues for you and me. Such is the love of this Heavenly Father. Now, looking at our own earthly fathers. They may fall short, they may sin against us, but remember, our Heavenly Father loves us and has given us His begotten Son so that we may have new life in Him, so that we may see this sonship that we have, that we're able to call Him our dear Heavenly Father. You know, interestingly, when Jesus came to Israel, He showed God's steadfast love as a loving Heavenly Father. He showed a deep personal way of calling God Abba, a term of endearment. Abba conveys a level of intimacy with God, like exclusively between a child and his father. It was very profound because Israel never thought of God in a personal, individual way. Remember, uh, we mentioned that for Old Testament Israel, they can only see God as Father in a collective way, as a nation, as a country, as the people of God. But individually or personally, it became true only. In Jesus Christ so Jesus frequent reference to God as Abba is something very unusual in his time Israel never thought God would care for them in an individual and personal way Jesus revealed that God indeed cares for each lost sheep like a dear father who seeks his child for himself so when he taught his disciples, he taught them, Our Father, who art in heaven, holy be your name. Such is the expression of love from a son to the Father. Such is the expression of love also from our Heavenly Father to each one of us. It is truly reassuring to note that. So Jesus is also our creator who knows our frame he do not he do not just know ourselves or organs but also our emotions and frailties he has wonderfully and fearfully created us like jeremiah saying before i form you in the womb i knew you and before you were born i consecrated you he knows your frame. Throughout Israel's history, we read of the many times they turned away from God. Many times they preferred the gods of the neighboring kingdoms. God forewarned them that these idols are going to be a snare. Many times God delivered them from the enemies, yet they continued in their unbelief. They did not trust Him as God or Savior. They did not follow Him. They were indifferent 
callus and rebellious. Even then, God showed them His steadfast love. God continually delivered them from the enemies. God continued to provide for them. And He has even sent prophets after prophets to warn them of what they have done. That hopefully they will turn to God. Hopefully they will turn to the Father as a child realizes his faults before his Father. So, our, as God's children then, our Heavenly Father desires that we be committed in knowing Him and acknowledging Him in all the things that we do. Becoming a Christian may be a one-time decision, but if you are just reali relying on that decision and not live your life for Him, not realizing that He is your Father, you have missed the point of His salvation and love. Remember that from the Old Testament to the New Testament, it says the righteous shall live by faith. It is not a blind faith, but a faith that is built on the knowledge of God. A faith that is built on a relationship, a personal, intimate relationship with God. Realizing who He is in your life. He is not only the Holy God, but He is your Heavenly Father. He has the right to correct us, to discipline us, at the same time that He continues to shower us with that love, with that security, with that certainty, with that hope in the future. So, my dear brothers and sisters, uh, there are so many things that we can gain, nuggets from Psalm 103 regarding God as Father. So, in application, dear Christians, read on i like to encourage you to read on read and know your heavenly father read with all diligence and avoid the disobedience of israel if this is the first time you realize he is your loving heavenly father then pray to him and commit to know this heavenly father and as the fatherhood of God, He demands His children to conform to His ways. We need to follow Him. It cannot just be a Sunday thing. It cannot just be a few minute thing. It has to be a lifetime of enjoying God as our loving Heavenly Father. Commit your time to seek Him and listen to Him. As a father, he wants, he really wants us to know him, to walk with him and to enjoy his word. Are you ready to walk with him in every moment of your life? Commit them. Commit every day to follow him. Count his blessings in your life and celebrate his goodness and enjoy his word. Commit also the last thing that we need to commit is to pray. Pray for the fathers of UECG. Pray for the pastors. And pray even for your brothers. They may not be married yet, but they're, they'll be fathers one day. So we need to pray. Pray that the Lord may raise up men who are truly after God's heart, who will be steadfast in their love for the Lord, who will enjoy Him in faith, in love, and in doctrine. May the fathers of UECG be a testament of who God is. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that we're able to enjoy listening 
to Psalm 103, knowing that this was written, although by David, yet you inspired him because of what he has seen in you, the model father to him. Lord, may we look up to you and see you. May we commit our ways in knowing you, in enjoying you, in following you. Thank you, O Lord. In Christ's name we pray. Let us receive the benediction. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forevermore. Guan Yang Yao Wei Yang Ding Dip Guan Ping. เจ้าเจ้าดานไอ้ชู้ยาโซกี้ตกตุยบันเซอีเจงกิบเห็นใจติดเก้าอิงเอียงวันวันกุยโหตกอิเตชงเตดานไอ้คิวชู้อีทาง